Folks, how you doing? This is Dan Powers at Champion. We're going to take about five to ten minutes to walk over some of the cool new features of eBridge and eBridge explicitly for BigFix. And this is integrating uh, BigFix into your ServiceNow environment. So one of the first things we wanted to talk about is your CMDB. And as we look up here, we can see we have some great default dashboards up here of all the information that your big fix environment has. Why do we do this? Uh, twofold is ServiceNow is your source of truth. And this could have a lot of your CI devices, right? We want to be able to build out that CMDB. We want to be able to keep it accurate as well uh, very quickly. And we're able to do that with this big fix integration. So first thing to notice, we also know that you could have a lot of other uh, devices or CIs, if you will, inside your CMDB that are not running BigFix, and that's fine. And the view I'm looking at here is obviously from eBridge. This is a default dashboard you would get by enabling this application, which is a certified application in the ServiceNow store. It's not a one-off integration, and it is bi-directional. But one of the first things I wanted to jump in here to you is to kind of show you that yes we are populating all of this data um, in the cmdb so i'm going to look for my particular device sony running windows 10 we can see some random information here but as i drill into my device from uh, the cmdb standpoint as we load this data from big fix a lot of this information is coming from the life cycle analysis right that's what we look for by default but we also load all custom analysis as well so if you only have patch, for example, in Big Fix, we can still get this hardware, this software, all of this cool information that I'm looking at here. Um, it just means we have to make a configuration change to populate it from your custom analysis versus what comes out of the box in Big Fix. But all the information that I'm really looking for, Big Fix has. So this is going to add a lot of extra data into your CMDB. And because Big Fix is a near real-time collection platform, and because it'll even work on those devices that are not on your network, that are sitting at Starbucks, sitting at home, we can still keep your CMDB healthy. Even if you're running ServiceNow's Discovery, we're going to be able to get a better depth and uh, breadth of software and uh, asset information into your CMDB. And that's what drives a lot of rest of these uh, dashboards and so forth. So again, as we also pull this information in, I did want you to realize we do follow the process, the reconciliation process in ServiceNow. So as we pop data into the CMDB, we do follow the proper process. For example, hey, we found this piece of software. Yes, we added the software catalog. And yes, it is installed on DPowers in this example, since I drilled into me. But at the end of the day, what I'm trying to show you is that we are able to grab all of this information and we populate it properly into the CIs inside of the ServiceNow environment. The other cool part is because I have a few customers that had to do a lot of custom discovery, meaning they needed to understand in their POS environment what actual uh, credit card readers were on those devices, for example. It's one simple example. Doing this out of the default discovery, A, was not feasible for them because they were only doing discovery at the core, but because they did have big fix, it was a simple analysis that we created in big fix to figure out, hey, it's a MagTech, it's a Verifone, right down to the firmware level. And since we pull all that data over from eBridge into ServiceNow, we were able to populate all of that different type of data sets that Discovery just couldn't do. So the capabilities of expanding on this are unlimited with the big fix side. So I started with that just so you can see this is how a lot of this information uh, is gathered. And in particularly, since I drilled in the software on my machine, we could also see software overall, right? So we can see all the different type of browsers that are in an area. Obviously, Google Chrome's here here quite a bit. Uh, we, but we can see all the different type of, of browsers installed. Uh, once we drill into this, we can see how many uh, install counts of Mozilla Firefox are actually out there. And we can even see the devices that it's installed on. So again, this is that source of truth, keeping it updated, keeping it accurate very, very clearly. Another cool thing, and one of the last piece I want to show you in this quick video is our patching scenario. Uh, but since I've done a lot of big fix installations, um, what you're normally looking for in big fix or C is actually patch severities. Hey, out of the new uh, data that we're seeing this month, what is the patches that are available in, in my environment to patch? Uh, and that's great. Works beautifully. The hard part is, in a lot of environments, the security team is going to ask right over here and say, hey, we're going to run Qualys, we're going to run Rapid7. We have no idea what a fixlet is, but we're going to tell you what the CVE numbers are. 
Well, that data is in Big Fix, and with a simple click, I can start reporting on CVEs. <clears throat> Very difficult to do inside of Big Fix and inside of the web reports. But since that data is now pulled in the service now, I can see that. I can search, find this particular CVE. I can see all of the fixlets that relate to that CVE in Big Fix. I could add these to a baseline. I could even drill in further and say, okay, well, what exactly is this? Here's all the information as it comes out of Big Fix environment, which is accurate. And I can get right down to actually which devices actually need this patch, what devices need this CVE. It makes that patching uh, workload a little bit better between your security team and your patching team. So another last thing I wanted to go over, and I'm trying to make this video fairly short because there's a lot of cool new features that we have in here, um, as you can see. But one of the cool ones is patching in general. So if we think about how this would might work normally, is you would use your tool of choice. In this case, I'm going to say it's Big Fix. You're going to run a web report, the Excel connector. You're going to run the patch wizard, and you're going to figure out what patches that you want to deploy this month to a target set of devices. Um, you're going to then export that data, add it to your change ticket so that you can go to CAB, the change approval board, right? Uh, whatever your change process is. Uh, once I get in the CAB, I may have to adjust the different patches. Maybe they say, oh, listen, this patch for Java, we can't run that on these devices. You need to go edit this. So we can go through iterations of this before we get approval. The problem is, as those iterations happen, it can be very manual or easy for manual um, error to happen as I go back and forth and try to edit this between my big fix environment and the ServiceNow ticket I created. So what we ended up doing is even though we have multiple of these, we created a new one. And the concept here is let's figure out if we have all this information in ServiceNow, let's create that change request in ServiceNow. We can edit it as much as we like before we create it on the big fix side and before we take action makes sense. So let me walk you through that. We can go into the patch wizard. And of course, I have to give it some type of name. So I'm just going to say Dan's test um, server patching, right? We have to give it a name. But and then, of course, you're going to save it in a custom site. We automatically list our custom sites. Of course, in this case, I'd probably pick my Windows patching site. <coughs> Excuse me. Then the next thing is, well, when does this start? Well, in this case, if I was starting my patching on Saturday and I could adjust the times, I'm just going to take this from a, a demo standpoint, and my patching is going to end on Sunday, um, I, I fill in that time. It could be a week from now. It could be a month from now. It doesn't matter. This is my change management ticket that I want to get approval for. So then the sites, the other nice part here, <clears throat> again, since we have this data in service now, which we upload this consistently all the time to keep it in sync with Big Fix, if you enable other sites, whether that's Red Hat, whether that's Oracle Linux, whether that's Mac OS, or if you look up here, CentOS, um, I'm going to pick pick with the Windows site, we're able to see right inside our service now environment. And then I can come in here and say, you know what, I'm going to pick January, March, throw that over here. These automatically pulling in the groups that you've defined in Big Fix. So again, as you create groups, add new groups, um, all of this information is updated uh, at the same time, let me move my face. Um, and at this point, I have an option, which I would choose is, hey, don't show me if the fixlets that aren't applicable to my environment, right? So I'm gonna say yes here and choose next options. So now ServiceNow works real quick behind the scenes and boom, it's already done. Since it has all this information, based on the sites I picked, the timestamps I want, um, and, and the groups I picked, these are now the applicable fixlets inside of Big Fix that apply based on the settings I just picked for my environment, making it easier for me to go pick my patching. And if I click on any one of these, I can start seeing more information, right? The Where it comes from, yes, it's critical, enterprise security, Microsoft. We're gonna add a few more fields in here. So this is the beta side. Um, but I can also come down here for an example and I can add some other features. For an example, I can say, okay, well, you know what? I also um, want to only see either A, I can look up a CVE number. For example, I just saw it right here. It's very common to do this, but most likely most of you are used to something like severity. So I could say, hey, severity starts with critical, uh, run this filter, and of course, my list here just changed. So the cool part is, again, I'm randomly going to pick some stuff here for demo purposes. Um, but I then 
pick the um, the fixlets that I want, and then I can do a checkout process. Now, what's happening here, this is the default. This is the beauty of hooking Big Fix up to service now. Big Fix is great at that real-time information, giving me the data that I need at real time, whether the computers are on or off the network. Being able to do that with Big Fix is great, but being able to tie that to the workflow of ServiceNow platform now makes this amazing. Because what happened here is I now have all of this information the patches, the group of machines I'm trying to go to, when I'm going to do this change request. And by the way, I'm doing this for patching, but this could work for software distribution. It could really work for anything. Um, now in here, I can do a checkout. Um, and what happens now is I now have this just like a normal ServiceNow workflow. Our default workflow behind the scenes, which we expose to you and you could leverage and modify, but this actually goes to the cab request. So nothing has happened in Big Fix at this point. This is simply happening inside a service now. And why? Because I may need to change the window. Maybe I was supposed to start Sunday to Monday instead of Saturday to Sunday. Oh, it's okay. I can go edit this in service now ticket. And maybe I picked some Java or some patches that I wasn't supposed to get applied to somebody. I can go fix this as well. So you can keep modifying basically this request until I get approval. Once it actually gets approved, then and only then does ServiceNow call over, over the REST API to BigFix over eBridge and actually create the baseline and actually kick off the action based on the time I set. And also as that action runs, we monitor that action while it remains in an open state and pull all that information back into ServiceNow. So now I have a closed loop change management process for anything that you can do in BigFix. This example was for patching. So again, this is a quick video. I hope you folks enjoyed it. If you'd like to learn more, please let me know. I'd love to show you some of the technology and some of the information that we've put into eBridge and the integration into ServiceNow <clears throat> because we also make it very flexible that under the self-service side, if you create software packages and you create it in a specific site in your big fix environment, which will take you 60 seconds to create, any software packages you put in there can automatically populate your software catalog and leverage the power of ServiceNow's workflows for approvals and actually make that uh, user-friendly and also relieve your folks from having to read tickets and actually perform the work in Big Fix. Everything flows just out of service now. The same thing for an example is I can say, uh, let me do a communication test because it's easy. And again, I can pick my device, boom, SD powers, execute that action. And now that action, because for this, it's an easy request and I am administrator, so there's no approval behind it. It actually is firing into Big Fix right now and doing that communication text text fixlet into the Big Fix environment. So cool integrations, easily to expand upon, and we'd love you to see this at some point. So let me know, dpowers at championsg.com. If you have Big Fix and you have service now, this is an invaluable tool set. And let me grab up here just to show you that this is my big fix environment. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And since I just kicked off that eBridge communications test, we can go here to the action tab. And there it is. We can see that action tab was actually kicked off. Uh, we can see it kicked off to my device. And we could even see that it was kicked off by eBridge, right? So this is the beauty of it. My machine hasn't responded to it yet, but as it does, it will update even back in service now. Um, and here's what I did an hour ago as a test as well, doing it to something else. But the beauty of this, as I had mentioned, is it's very expandable, meaning if you simply come in Big Fix and create eBridge automation, anything that you put in here, a fixlet that your big fix administrators pre-approve, you're now giving this capability inside of ServiceNow, which you could give to the help desk, you could give it to level one, or in the case of eBridge software, we're actually able to give this as that self-service, as I had mentioned here, if I can arrange my windows side by side real quick, just so you can see. Um, anything that we're seeing from the big fix side, since we update periodically about once an hour um, inside of big fix, any of the fixlets under automation are automatically going to be able to populate in here and be able to 
be added to any workflow you want inside of ServiceNow. And the same thing as software. Any software that's approved for your environment and you add in here will automatically show up here in ServiceNow. Um, if it's something like Firefox, the user can just click it, no real workflow, probably just go deploy it. If it's something that costs money, maybe your workflow is it has to get manager approval. Anyway, the interaction between the Big Fix platform and ServiceNow is incredible. Uh, if you do have these two, please let us know. We'd love to talk to you about it. Thank you very much.